Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Betrayal, Deck of Lost Souls by Hasbro and Avalon Hill. This is a three to five player card game, takes roughly about 45 minutes to an hour to play, and is for ages 12 and up. In the game Betrayal, you're going to be selecting a character, having a secret role, and be receiving a variety of different cards. You're going to get item cards, and you're going to get trial, tribulation type cards, and then you're also going to have a bunch of these curses out on the field. Your objective in the game is to gather items, play items in front of you, utilize them to defeat certain types of omens and curses, all while at the same time finally dealing with the true curse. There's a little trick to it though, and that trick is one of you is possibly a traitor, bent on destroying uh, the entire party and causing collapse. If that player is able to stop a player from having any items at the end of their turn, the game is over and they win, or if the last uh, well, one of these little curses gets revealed and the players are not able to complete it, the traitor will win that way as well. Will the players be able to defeat the curse for the house on the hill, or be succumbed and stuck within its walls? Walls forever with this deck being the evil villain succeeding in its goal. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin set up for the game, the first thing you need to know is how many players are playing the game. This could be three, four, or five players. And when you're playing with four players, you're going to not incorporate the Inquisitor card. This is only for the five player game. It's a special variant card that is a little bit more challenging to use. And the same is said for a three player. There's a different way in which you're going to be getting a number of cards in hand, etc., etc. I'm going to talk about the four player game mode, which kind of encompasses everything a bit. Basically, you get your character, and then you're also gonna get one random card. You're either gonna get an explorer card, or you're going to get the trader card. In a four player game, you'll take five of these cards, four explorers and a trader, shuffle them all up, give one to each player, and discard into the game box the last one. That one has to be separate from the other ones though, because some player might get to look at it at some point throughout the game. After you have went ahead and done that, giving everybody a role and a character, the next thing you're going to do is shuffle up the decks. So you'll shuffle up the blue item deck, you'll shuffle up the uh, greater omens, and then the lesser omens, the red and the yellow deck, and then you're going to give cards from these decks to each player. Four items to each player, three yellow, which is the lesser omens, to each player, and two greater omens to each player, which are the red cards. Then, make sure, of course, that in the blue item deck, if you're not playing the special variant or the more challenging version, you can take out the Sharon's Obols. These are basically artifact or item cards that don't do anything, but they're used to make the game a little bit more complicated, so set these aside. Each player should also get a reference card, which you can use to understand how the game works, the different phases of the game, and the different types of items the different curses on the field need. Finally, you'll take the curse cards and you'll place them all out from one all the way to six. They're numbered in the top left hand corner. Then you're basically set up and you can get rid of all the extra characters and any other character cards or wanderer cards and other cards you might not need. And it should look something like this. This is just two of the four players here. Okay, so playing the game. Well, the first thing you need to know is that if you are a player, your objective is to complete the minor and major omens. These are challenge cards that are gonna come up throughout the game at the end of every player's turn. They're gonna require certain items, the blue cards, that players are gonna hopefully have, and those players are gonna have to have them in front of them in order for you to complete them. If you do not succeed in completing them, you're gonna get in trouble and it'll cost you something. You're going to lose the game if you ever do not have blue item cards either in hand or on the field in front of you. And so that's what the trader is going to try and do. Try and help as much as possible. Stay a traitor, but also try and hinder the players as much as possible as well. Basically, if you can avoid making players suspect you and also make sure that an omen fails, that's gonna to be to your benefit. And you can do that in a number of different ways as the trader. It's a very simple, straightforward game for the other players. You're simply trying to play the cards that you can, trade the cards that you can't use, and hopefully complete these going from yellow to red to finally the last curse. So, here's the way it works. First is the cooperation phase. Uh, each of these turns is going to be taken one at a time from player to player going clockwise. So it's my turn and I'm in the cooperation phase. I can choose to do one of three things. Option number one is I can take an item that I can play and place it down in front of me. 
If the item doesn't have a symbol on it, I can just freely play it. But in the top left hand corner, if it does have a symbol or symbols, I have to check that I am affinity with it. The, my character card has a symbol in the bottom middle, and that symbol will let me play those type of cards. So for instance, if it's a star symbol and the card has a star symbol, I can play that card. If the card has no symbol, I can also play that. But let's say it has a fire symbol. I can't play that card. I have to give it to somebody else who has a fire symbol. That being said, if I don't want to do that, the other thing I can do is I can discard a card and draw. For technically I draw first, then I choose which one of these I don't want and I'll place that card face down in the discard pile next to the deck. Make sure that you always draw first and that you always discard face down so that nobody knows what you're placing. Remember that you're not allowed to give any information about the cards in your hand to any of the players regardless of whether they're a traitor or not. And only can you use ask for help if it's a card that's in front of you. Then, if you do not want to draw and discard, the last thing that you can do, which is a very useful one, is trade. I can give you a card, and then you can give me a card. Hopefully those cards are going to be usable for those players, in which case you can help to defeat the omens. After you've done one of those things, play a card, discard, draw a discard, or trade, then you're going to move on to the omen phase, which is pretty simple. Omens are played into two stages. You either have to play the yellow, you have to play the yellows first, and then if you have no yellows, you can play the reds. You have the minor ones and the major ones. When you play out an omen, which you have to do, you're then going to check to see the requirements of said omen. On the top left hand corner, it will tell you what are the requirements, aka what item cards you need on the field in front of any player in order to complete the omen. The very bottom, it kind of gives you the name, the requirements are written there, and then of course, what happens if you succeed or if you fail. How it works is pretty simple. I play my omen card out. It requires a key. I then check in my hand, do I have a key? I check on my field, do I have a key? I can play any cards that can help me get to the completion of this omen. So if I have that key, I can drop it down. If not, I'll just simply pass. And each player will have an opportunity to play a card to help defeat this omen. So if I don't have the key, but maybe Bill does, Bill can play out the key and then thusly complete this omen by the time it comes around back to me. If no one has the card needed, then this is going to be a failed omen. It's going to get discarded. I'm going to do the discard. I'm going to do the failed effect, which might be something like discarding an item from my hand, and in which case my turn will end and pass to a new player. If you're playing as the trader and you have the item, you don't have to actually play it as long as it's in, in your hand. However, if it's in front of you, you must use it. You're thusly saying, I have the item. And the only way you don't have to do that is when you actually call yourself a trader, which doesn't happen until you get to these red cards, which we'll talk about in a second here. After we have either completed or failed this omen and discarded it, it's the next player's turn. They're gonna go into the phase in which they're cooperating, giving a card or playing a card or drawing and discarding one, and then flipping over another yellow omen. Eventually, all the yellow omens will either be completed by succe succeeding them or by failing them, in which case you're going to be only going to be left with these guys here, the red ones. And it works the same way. You'll play one out, and then you'll try and complete it by going around the table. Now, also do note that if you do not succeed this, you're still going to suffer the penalty, and if you do, you'll get to go ahead and gain the benefit. After any player has played a red omen, the trader uh, at the end of the turn can reveal himself. The trader can also reveal himself on his turn, or the trader can reveal themselves when there's an item in play that they have that can help a red omen, but they don't want to actually use it. They have to use it for the yellow ones, but not for the red. In which case they can say, I'm the trader, I'm not going to use them, I'm going to discard all my items, etc. Well, that brings me to like, how do you call out a trader if you know they're a trader? Well, on the players, uh, when, when the red cards hit, you can actually decide who you think a trader is. And you can say, I think they're a trader. It's my turn. I have the red cards that are being played, in which case I think Bill's the trader. So everybody can go ahead and decide, and then you'll go ahead and check that player. If the player is not a trader, every player who A, that decided he was a trader, and B, second him, and the trader who was not the trader, all three of those players will have to discard an item in front of them or from their hand. If they are the trader, they're basically going to give you all of their item cards, divided them up amongst the players, which is really excellent. And then when a trader has been revealed, any of these red omen cards that are left in any player's hand will go directly to them. And instead of them playing a normal turn, they're going to simply select which omen they want to hit the field at the end of every other player's turn. And then after all red cards have been dealt out, trader or not, you're going to deal with these cards here. 
Throughout the game, some of the cards from the item deck might be called hints and might go onto these cards. If a trader reveals themselves and doesn't get revealed, they can place their trader card on one of these as a hint. And then of course, some omens that you complete might be hints as well. So for instance, it might say, play this card. This card is a hint for three or six. I'll play it on three. Now three has a hint. The card with the most hints is going to be the secret like curse, the main true curse if there's a trader. So if there's a trader, the card of the most hints is the one that is the true curse. If there's a tie, the trader will choose which one. If there's no trader in the game, you'll have to defeat four of the six of these curses to win the game. And defeating these works just like an omen. It'll say the requirements, like it'll be like key plus sun or moon. So if you have the moon or the key and sun, you'll defeat the curse. Um, and so you'll have to either defeat the true curse or you'll have to go ahead and defeat four of them because without a trader, the game's a lot easier. So making you have to defeat four means you have to have all the items necessary. And if you can do that, you win the game. Otherwise you lose. And if there's a trader involved when you lose, the trader wins the game. Yep, it's that simple. That's how the game works. Betrayal, the deck of lost souls with no the the. Anyway, what do I think about it? So this is a card game that is a partial trader game that is all about completing objectives. There are a set number of omens and a set number of curses that you'll have to deal with throughout the game and the players are just simply trying to play cards out as resources, which are also kind of like their HP total, attempting to solve them. The trader is going to prevent that from happening if possible and kind of work between the lines. And if there's no trader, it's all about just dealing with the deck and there's a little bit of rising suspicion as you go through and it's mainly about selecting and keeping the cards that you need. A couple little caveats too is at the end of the main blue deck, there are green cards. These are like advanced items. They draw just like regular ones. Some cards might let you get them earlier and they just provide you with a better benefit. If this deck, the blue deck of items ever runs out, you're simply going to go ahead and leave one of the advanced items on top, which will just say that you can take a card from the discard pile. And that card is just a reminder so that whenever you do draw an item from the deck here, you're going to get to draw any card you want from the blue item deck. Um, the curses and the omens and the cards are all pretty simple to understand, actually. They only just have either A, this is what this card gives you. It's a key, has a key symbol. Or the omen is gonna say something like, this omen requires a key, and if you have the key, here's the positive. If you don't, here's the negative. Um, the negatives for the game, speaking of, the first thing is that, gosh, these cards are beautiful. They're nice tarot-sized cards. They're thick. They are all foiled. They're all holographic looking. They are really, really pretty. They are really hard to see. It's really hard to understand all the different symbols and whatnot, especially not when it comes to the omens as much, but the item cards themselves, having to figure out who has affinity for what. The colors are very close. I wish that the orange and the, the, the brown were a little bit less, or maybe it's red and brown. I don't know. They're, I'll show you up close. It's really hard to differentiate the two. Um, knowing that there's affinity involved, I would make sure, I would much prefer that they are very separate so I know who has what and whatnot. And also, your character card has your symbol on it, but it's foiled. So it's also very hard to see. And we had a big issue with that until we literally just memorized each other's different symbols. Um, also, when you are completing the omens, right, the minor or the greater omens, it's going to require you to play cards from your hand if you have one as the main player to complete it. And it says in the rules, like, play a card that can help you defeat it. Uh, some cards can help you dig to search for a card that can help you de defeat it. Does that technically count? I'm not sure. So there's some vaguity, vaguity? I made that word up. There's some vagueness to the rules as to what cards you can play or your opponents can play to make sure that you successfully achieve the, the success of the omen. Uh, I've just played it so that it just if a card can help you get there, it counts as a card that gets there. But, but I might be wrong. Um, the other aspect to the game is remembering each of the different symbols for all the different cards. There's a ton of them. They're all just based on other item cards that you have in the game. And keeping track of this stuff is, is a bit challenging as the game goes on. Otherwise, though, this is a cool game. It's basically a small deck of cards that has a ton of different decks. There's a ton of different things you can do in the game. There's even variants to it. All the artwork is spectacular. Love this artwork. I mean, I'm a big fan of the stylized dark kind of Cthulian mythos style artwork, 
beautiful background on the cards. The cards are beautiful in quality, and the game's rather simple. Playing a card or trading a card um, or drawing and discarding a card to get the items that you need while not making sure not to discard cards that you'll need later in the game as you're trying to deal with the, the true curse. Uh, going up against the different omens, which can usually provide you with additional items or make you lose items, which is kind of like it's in itself like life and a currency. And then the trader's role is unique too, where they can attempt to just make somebody lose all their items, right? That's one possibility. They can also attempt to slowly drain the party of resources where they fail just a few omens here and there at a time, keeping them in the game until the very end where they want to reveal themselves and start causing havoc, choosing a true curse for an item that they know the group does not have. Oh, you discarded the trumpet mid-game and you can't get it back now? The true curse is going to be four of beasts of the woods. And now you have to figure out a way to get it from the discard pile. And it makes people scramble throughout the game, especially at the end there, to try and succeed. It's, it's a pretty fair and balanced style of game. However, if you're the traitor and you get found out very quickly, uh, it's basically game over for you. The players are gonna succeed. Basically, if I make some sketchy moves too early and they call me out, they'll take all my items, which gives them a huge advantage. It's also gonna make me only be able to play these red cards, which can mess players up, but if they already have all the cards that they need, then these cards don't do anything against uh, them. It's not gonna, there's no other prevented benefit. So don't get caught as the trader. You need to be very sneaky in this game and play the slow role or focus on one player to make sure that they suffer the most that you can possibly make them suffer. Overall, it's a beautiful game. It has a nice light trader mechanic to it. The game's longer than I thought it would actually be, which is not a bad or a good thing. It was just something I noticed in the game. And uh, the fact that I like playing both roles, the trader and the wanderer, AKA the, the good guys trying to defeat the deck of cards at Top Hill House. Reminds me of like that movie House on, on the Haunted Hill and a group of people walk into it and go up into the house and they find this deck of tarot cards, which are haunted, and that it's trying to trap them in there. And you have to break free of all the er omens and curses to once again, escape the deck and thusly get the heck out of that house. So thematically, it works very well. Art, theme, all that good stuff is great. I just wish it was a little clearer, wish a few of the rules were a little clearer, but overall, a really solid experience, beautiful looking game, and it, it's really cool. I'm gonna be playing this a few more times while I'm play some of the variants with the Charon's Obols, um, as well as the five player game, which I haven't played, which is the Inquisitor, which is a character that just doesn't have affinity to any of the cards, which makes it even more challenging. Well, there you go. That's the game Betrayal, Deck of Lost Souls. Check it out. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Betrayal. And if you're interested in picking it up, there's a link down below in the description. And if you would like, there's also a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button so you can see more of our videos that we produce here on the week, as well as Sunday we do a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST where we play games just like this one. Probably not this one because the lighting for the camera won't be super great because of all the, the foiling to it, but a lot of games are similar to this one and a lot of the bigger ones as well. Uh, what not is our stream on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. PST when we do that. And of course, as always, I look forward to defeating omens and curses with you next time.